Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're counting down our picks for ripoff games better than the original. For this video, we'll be looking at the games that clearly copied a popular title, yet became immensely more successful. Are there any ripoff games you think we missed? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Streets of Rage, based on Final Fight. Lots of beat-em-ups resemble each other, but the similarities here are too strong to ignore. Even the main characters look nearly identical. Capcom ported its arcade hit Final Fight exclusively to the SNES in 91. As this was in the midst of the console wars, Sega created its own street beat-em-up to compete. Lead designer Noriyoshi Oba even used Final Fight as inspiration. But it wasn't just better graphics and an incredible soundtrack that made Streets of Rage better. The Final Fight port removed one of the characters, one of the levels, and the option of co-op. Flash forward to 2020, and Streets of Rage just received a fourth entry, while Final Fight hasn't been heard from since 2006. SimCity, based on Utopia. Will Wright's SimCity is largely regarded as one of the most influential games of all time, having led to the popularity of resource management and life simulation games. However, that doesn't mean it was the first one. That honor goes to Mattel's Utopia on Intellivision. The game pinned two players against one another, tasking them with maintaining an island's various buildings and keeping their citizens happy. While it was hindered by the technology at the time, SimCity was not. Not only was it available on multiple platforms, but it enhanced everything great about Utopia. Citizens made their own decisions based on a variety of factors put in place by the player. Its innovative changes led to awards and an empire of spin-off titles. Mrs. Pac-Man, based on Pac-Man and Crazy Auto. Gather around for an interesting bit of gaming history. Namco's original Pac-Man was a huge arcade hit in 1980, so much so that it inspired the development team at General Computer Corporation to make a better version. Their game, called Crazy Auto, was a clear ripoff. However, Midway, the North American publishers of Namco's original, was so impressed that it bought the mod and reskinned it as Mrs. Pac-Man. And it's a good thing they did. The unintended sequel features slightly faster gameplay, more mazes, and the enemies move more randomly. This forced players to keep on their toes rather than memorize a pattern, which made for more interesting gameplay as well as more quarters. Farmville, based on Farmtown. It was basically impossible to escape the craze of Farmville on Facebook when it debuted in 2009. Every player wanted all of their friends to join them in managing a rural lifestyle, and I said no to every single one of them. The simple yet addictive premise required completing a loop of visiting farms of friends, harvesting crops, and feeding animals to earn and spend farm coins and farm cash. However, developer Zynga cashed in on the aesthetic and gameplay of Farmtown, which had been released earlier that year. For whatever reason, Farmville was able to poach the users of Slash Key's smaller, Farmtown, to a point where it was the most popular Facebook game for two years and received a sequel. League of Legends, based on Defense of the Ancients. Defense of the Ancients was a popular mod of 2002's Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos. It was set on a map based on Aeon of Strife from StarCraft, itself a fan-made map. From these mods, the MOBA subgenre was born. But the first major release was Riot Games' League of Legends. The team recruited Dota designer Steve Feek to help with the spiritual successor. Players team up as champions with unique abilities and classes to destroy a large structure guarded by the opposing team. Essentially, Dota with a lot more resources. League of Legends is still incredibly popular today, with a ton of media tie-ins and its own championship. But at least Valve purchased the rights to Dota to make a fully-fledged sequel. My powers grow! Angry Birds based on Crush the Castle. Angry Birds is a game so simple, most probably wonder how they didn't come up with it first. But for the team at Armor Games, they actually did. Armor released a Flash game called Crush the Castle in 2009, which had players firing trebuchets at castles to crush knights within. It is the blueprint for what would become Rovio's Angry Birds later that year. The game's comical nature, such as using different bird types as ammo with various properties, helped it stand out. The development team has ridden the first game's success through crossovers with various franchises, like Star Wars, as well as movies and TV shows. Crush the Castle did get a sequel, but it's otherwise a footnote in the Angry Birds history. Candy Crush Saga, based on the Bejeweled series. Sweet. 
Just like Farmville, it was hard to avoid the sheer amount of people sucked into the world of Candy Crush Saga, but it is extremely far from original. Bejewel popularized and perfected the Match 3 puzzle design first introduced by 1994's Shariki. While it would inspire its own clones after the 2001 original, it would take more than a decade for another developer to steal PopCap's crown. King's free-to-play Candy Crush Saga is aggressive with its microtransactions, but it seems a sweet tooth aesthetic was all it took to usurp the throne, and Candy Crush itself has received a slew of sequels. <laughs> Guitar Hero, based on Guitar Freaks. Most of us have wondered what it would feel like to perform in front of a cheering crowd. And Harmonix did its best to capitalize on that with 2005's Guitar Hero. But it certainly borrowed mechanics from a less popular title. Konami released Guitar Freaks in 1999 in arcades and on the PlayStation, but it was only ever available in Japan. Gameplay was exceptionally similar with players using a guitar peripheral to hit different colored buttons in time to the music. It eventually led to a lawsuit, which was settled out of court. There's no denying that Guitar Hero is better. The mainstream appeal of its catalog and availability outside of Japan on multiple platforms built one of the most popular franchises in the mid double O's. Pong, based on table tennis. One of the most important video games ever created is a ripoff. In May of 1972, Atari co-founder Noah Bushnell was present at a demonstration for the Magnavox Odyssey, the first commercial home video game console. There, he played table tennis, a game that came packaged with a system. While the Odyssey's game didn't have sound, Bushnell was inspired to create what would become an arcade classic, Pong. Due to the Odyssey's financial failure, Pong has gone down in history as a legendary release. Its commercial success helped set up the video game industry and led to Atari creating their own home console, which directly influenced the path of the medium. And it was all because of a copycat. Minecraft, based on Infiniminer. To say that Minecraft is bigger than developer Marcus Notch person could have imagined is the understatement of the century, but it grew from the ashes of another game. Infiniminer was developed by Zach Barth and released in incremental updates in 2009. The block-based sandbox game focused on mining and digging tunnels through procedurally generated maps, but it was discontinued the same year following a source code leak. Person was a fan of Infiniminer and was influenced by its art style and the block building mechanics. By adding in RPG elements and focusing heavily on the player's freedom to build whatever structures they want, Minecraft became a monster hit two years later. It is now more than just a game, it's a staple of pop culture. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.